In the first part of this series on BIM for renovation, we looked at the virtual building concept, how to use the renovation statuses, whether an element is an existing element, demolition element or new build element, and how to filter the drawings based on those three statuses. In this session, in part two, we're going to look at the process of creating documentation, and that will be by using this navigator, looking at the view map and layout book. We'll also look at schedules, the use of drawings, and creating a detail from the model. As we looked at in the first part of the series, the view map is where we can define different drawing styles. Whereas in the project map, we get a list of each part of the project, whether it's a floor plan view, section view, elevation view, or schedule. In the view map, we can decide which filters we want to apply to those parts of the model. For example, we could be looking at the ground floor plan. If I open up the ground floor plan from this existing building part of the view map, we can see the project as it is at the starting phase. If we go through to the demolition works, we can see the elements that are going to be removed as part of this project that are now highlighted in this drawing. The next folder shows the existing elements in black, demolition elements, as well as the new build elements over the top. Through to the proposed building, we can now see how this project will look at its conclusion. In each of these drawings, we're looking at the exact same model, we're just applying different filters. So these different views can these different views can be defined to show the drawing at a different scale, with different pen colours and pen weights, different levels of detail, different demolition statuses, and different element types. The same applies for other parts of the model too. For example, if we look at a section, here we can see the section in the demolition works phase. And here is the same section with the new build drawn over the top in red. Through to the proposed. This also applies to schedules. So here we can look at a door schedule. Again, this is connected live to the model. This particular schedule lists all of the doors from the proposed building. We could filter that further and only show the doors that are going to be added to this particular scheme. The schedule is set up to show each door type, a door ID, the dimensions and a fire rating, and the quantity of each of those door types. We also get a preview of that door type with the associated dimensions and we can click annotate and draw over the top if you want to add any additional information to this preview. As I said, this is live to the model. If I were to change any setting within this schedule, such as the fire rating, that would update in the object as well. If I select any particular door, I can press this button at the top and zoom in and select it on the floor plan. Here we can see this particular door in the floor plan view. And from here, I can access the settings for that particular door type. I can also select a door and zoom in to see it in 3D. This new door is part of the uh, new roof space. The next button in the, na the navigator is the layout book. So once we have our predefined views, we can drag and drop those onto drawing sheets. So this drawing sheet shows the floor plans for the existing building, the elevations and sections of the existing building, and schedules for the existing building. We can then look at that, those same drawings with the different demolition statuses as we've defined in the views. So here we're looking at the floor plans again, 
this time with the demolition status. And same for the sections and elevations. Here we have some elevation views demonstrating the building at the start and end of the project. On the left hand side we have the front view of this property. So here we have the existing elevation and the proposed elevation. We can see the change in the roof. And for the rear of the property, again we can see the change in the roof, the window types and the ground floor extension. We've also got a couple of examples of views generated from the 3D window showing a cutaway through the building with the different statuses visible. And then we have the proposed drawings. Finally we have some renders that are created from the model and we'll look at this more in the next part of this series. Although we've been looking at the filters that we can apply to the views and dragging and dropping those onto the drawing sheets, this can all be defined in a project template. So your template can control your drawing styles, drawing sheets and title blocks. And then when you're starting a new project, as you draw in the 3D window, the floor plans, sections and elevations are generated from that same model. And in this case, in the case of an existing building, the existing demolition and proposed drawings can all be generated from that model as well by using the predefined filters that you can store within your template file. At the top left of the navigator, we also have the drawing manager. The drawing manager shows a list of all of the drawings placed on the drawing sheets. If we select these drawings that need checking, we can check their status. They're all okay, they haven't changed in the model since they were last updated. So we can control how the drawings are updated and when, and that's particularly useful when we're looking at controlling revisions. Finally, we'll look at creating a detail from this project. So I'm going to go to the proposed section view. We've already got a detail marker drawn within this section. So this is what we can expect to achieve from 3D. Everything in this drawing is generated from the 3D model as roofs, beams and wall types as well as objects for the downpipes and so on. So to open this detail I, just, I can just select this detail marker and open that detail drawing. We've already got a couple of annotations in here that have been added and we're looking at this drawing at a 1 to 5 scale. We're also looking at this with the proposed renovation filter. There are additional options that we can use. For example, I could select my detailing pen set and that will control the pen weights for this drawing. What we can also do is edit any element within this drawing. At the detailing stage, the 3D model is essentially exploded into 2D components. So the composites become a series of lines and hatching. That means we can select any element within the project and stretch that around. We can also draw additional line types. And we can adjust any hatching. So I'll just wrap that seam around the edge of that roof. We can also add dimensions as required and further annotations for this particular drawing.